Welcome for our last auction item up for the art auction. Here we go. Yeah. Do I have a first and opening bid for this item? 12 potatoes. 12 potatoes from the lady in the big skirt. Okay. Yes, you, sir. Seven wives. Seven wives. All righty then. Anyone else? Do I have another auction? Any, anyone else? 25 whales. 25 whales? Yeah. I don't think we have a big snow. Okay. Yes, you, sir. I will give you six crowns. It's the native currency of Estonia. S oh. Uh, anyone else? I will give you another goat as well. <laughs> and a goat. Six croons and a goat sold to the man with the funny, funny, funny currency. And Milo. Mil Milosh. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, let's move on to <laughs> today's video on acids and bases. Acids. Oh, yellow. That's not going to work. Here we go. All right. Back to back to back. All right. <laughs> Acids and bases. The equivalence point. Uh, okay, equivalence. It's an E. C E. It's clearly equivalence. That's a C E. It's kind of. <laughs> Looks like the Estonian O. <laughs> All right. Um, acids and bases, the equivalence point. Um, so I want to remind you that in the previous video, uh, we had the generic equation that when you have an acid already in, we had a little titration going on. This is, by the way, a burette. It is filled with the base that we are titrating. All right, that's filled with our base. We have a flask down here with our unknown, I mean with our acid. It's a funny acid. It's called ha. Um, and I think the base we were using in the pre previous video was NaOH. And so what we have to do is we first have to kind of go, okay, acids and bases do what to each other? Neutralize. They make water. And some people write it as H2O. And then you have the sodium ion and the anion from the acid, but since this is in water, these two things are going to dissolve and they would still be aqueous. So don't really write them together because they're not going to form a solid or something. They're, they're soluble. Soluble. Sol soluble. Sol soluble. Whatever. They're dissolved. Um, and in the last video, we started off with 10 moles, and this was a BCA table before, change, after, and it was all in terms of moles. So I'm writing little ends here to represent the moles. So we had 10 moles. At the equivalence point, how many moles of base do you suppose have been added? Yes, you in the uh, hat. Yes, how many moles of base do you suppose have been added uh, if we have 10 moles of acid at the equivalence point? How many moles of base? 10. 10 it is. Good job. Nice hat, too. Um, <laughs> More confidence. Yeah, 10. At the equivalence point, the acid equals the base. Let me write the moles of acid equal the moles of base. And so if they're equal, what's going to be left? Acid or base? It's a trick question. The answer is nothing. Neither of them are left because this is going to, oh, minus 10, minus 10. I got zero. I got zero. Come on, pen. I got zero. What happens on this? Do we care about the water? No. There's no nah, sun. What was that? <laughs> um, there's got to be so much water that adding a measly 10 moles to it makes no difference. Um, we are going to be adding some Na, but that's a really weak conjugate, and we're, we don't really care about that. But this is interesting. So there was zero A anions. We're adding 10 moles of that. All right, and now we have 10 moles in there. And that is interesting because this is a weak acid. That is its conjugate base. Weak acids and conjugate bases are drastically different than strong acids and conjugates because a strong acid has a ridiculously weak conjugate. A weak acid has a decent strength weak conjugate base. 
So we actually have to think like, hey, I got rid of all the acid and I got rid of all the I got rid of all the acid and I got rid of all the base, but I, oh no, there is still base. I have to deal with that in a new equation. Um, so like we were doing before, we have to make how a, a reaction with the water. We have to pretend like that's the only thing left. But so this is in the water. That anion, whatever that is, is in the water. And we have said this is a, an acid, that's its conjugate base. So we have that base in water. What do bases do to water? Anybody? They, what do they take from water? What do bases take? They take a hydrogen. The base is going to take the hydrogen away and recreate our funny weak acid. And after it takes the hydrogen away, what is left of the water after you take the hydrogen away? OH. Yep hydroxide. So there is, it's making hydroxide. Um, it's making hydroxide. And now that we have established that the anion will take some stuff from the hydrogen, we need to plug in what we, we have some hydrogens from the water, sorry. We need to plug in that we have, uh, we're going to make an ice table, everyone's favorite. There are 10 moles of anions and I think the last video we said that there was 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, so we're going to say that this is a little bit more, um, and you would need to have the actual volume here at the equivalence, uh, and you would get that volume from well, you would get that volume from your titration curve, but we'll look at that in a minute. So this is the uh, the moles from here. Those are the moles, and that's the volume, and we don't really care about the water again. Um, because there's a, such a huge amount. We would lose X quantity and then this would be 10 divided by 0 0.051 minus X. Um, over here, uh, we don't have any HA, right? There's no HA. Yay, zero. But this creates a problem. Uh, the OH actually creates a real problem because we're at a very close to neutral position. We're not at neutral because uh, this is a weak acid, strong base. It's going to be a little bit above. But it's close to it. And if it was neutral, what would be the amount of hydroxide? If it was neutral, how much? Now, in terms of molarity, like at, at a pH of 7, how much OH and how much hydrogen is in there? Not zero. It's tiny. Minus 7. Yeah, you have minus seven of both hydrogen and hydroxide at uh, zero. So there is a little bit of hydroxide in there. And the question kind of becomes is when I add X to it, as this reaction shifts to the right, because there's nothing on this side, so it's got to shift to the right, is X going to be big enough that I can ignore that? So if X is like a thousand times bigger, then that wouldn't figure into the sig figs, would it? Do you get me? All right. But uh, I don't know if in Estonia they, they do things like this. But um, So uh, we're adding a tiny amount of X uh, plus X, X. And we have our e equivalence values for equilibrium. Let me just pause for a second so I can. All right. So we just had a, a slight size adjustment there to the screen so that I could actually get everything to fit on here. So here we have um, our ice table all set up, and then we would need to plug it into the expression. And just like uh, this, though, is a base. So we, let's write the KB equation. The products would be HA, OH, and then we only have one reactant worth mentioning. The other one is water, so we'll just throw a one in there for that. But we weren't given a KB. We already had a Ka from the last question, and the Ka in the last question was uh, 1.2 times 10 to the minus fourth in the previous video. So um, how do I go from Ka to Kb? How am I going to get that value so that I can actually solve? Yeah, the Ka and the Kb always multiply to be equal to the water constant, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. 
And so if we know Ka is, is that, we could just solve for Kb, which I've already done. It's 8.3 times 10 to the minus 11. Then we have to throw in our x's and all of this stuff into that equation we just made. So the, we have the funny acid is x. The hydroxide is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 plus x. And then the denominator is, let's simplify this down. What does that simplify down to? 19.6. So this is actually 19.6. That's a really huge molarity. Oh, you're right. This should be 0.5. Sorry. My fault, sir. You win. That should have been that should have been 0.5, so it's night. Oh, yeah, that's incredibly high. If that was That's what I was saying earlier. It was like yeah. I'm not exactly sure how you would get 10 moles into 5 milliliters. That'd be really dense. Yeah, it'd be super dense. Sorry. Yeah, that should have been 0.51 liters or 500 milliliters, 510 milliliters. Um, so we have 19.6 molar minus whatever the x value ends up being. And we have just created a problem that's not terribly easy to solve. Um, uh, it's not actually the worst thing ever, though, because chances are, do you think x is really close to 19.6, or do you think it's really small by comparison? It's probably really small by comparison. But let's talk about the logic. So if this is 10 to the minus 11, is it going to shift very far to the products? No, barely at all. So 19.6 minus x is probably still going to be equal to 19.6. So what we could do is, is it's OK mathematically to just kind of go, you know what, that, that, really doesn't, that really doesn't factor into the math. And then you've simplified it a little bit. You could cross multiply. You still have this, and that could cause an issue. All that aside, why not just use the solver function? Um, and we did the video on how to use the solver function a second ago. Uh, I would probably still go ahead and leave this x in there and just use my solver function to solve for x. So I'm going to pause this while I solve it for the solver function. So after uh, you know fiddling with it for a couple times, type some stuff wrong. We got 4.028. There's actually, there's actually a times 10 to the minus fifth hitting, heading way over there. So see that? Yeah. Um, so let's write that number down real fast. Four point, I'll just write down as a, so x equals 4.0, uh, let's just say 3 because it's 028, right? Times 10 to the minus fifth. Uh, <coughs> so... Where does this fit into our ice table? At the HA and here. And so we have this plus X. So the amount of hydroxide is the amount of hydroxide is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7 plus 4.03 times 10 to the minus 5th. Uh, if you can't do that in your head, you could grab the calculator, but it's going to be 4.04 .04 times 10 to the minus fifth. So it impacts just the last value, but it does impact it. So I guess it was worth including the 1 times 10 to the minus 7 because it did change the value we'd be willing to record. This is hydroxide. All right, that's the hydroxide concentration. Could I find the pOH pretty easily now? Now that we've done those 24 steps, yeah, I could take the negative log of that. I could say, hey, the pOH is equal to the negative log of that answer, which negative log uh, 4.04 .04 to the minus fifth is 4.39. Therefore, the pH is 9.61. So the pH is 9.61 at the equivalence point. Now that would be pretty obvious on a graph. So let's let's look at a titration graph here. So we've looked at this in the previous videos. We have the pH rising, then it levels out, and then whoa, what just happened, right? Um, 
and this is just about the sharpest point on that curve so that would be our equivalence point that would be at uh, 510 milliliters I think milliliters of the that was funny dropping the stuff the base yeah I got the drop in the base joke you made good job um, yeah you don't want to drop acid that's bad yeah yeah that's not and uh so that's the equivalence point oh my pen is non-functional um, and so the pH, what would be the pH right there? See, there we go. What's the pH? 9.61. Now, if you're reading a graph, you're not going to be able to get to the, the 1 when reading the graph, but you, you would probably see that, you know, oh, here is 9 and there's 10. It's a little bit closer to 10, so 9.6. Um, you might be able to estimate it uh, to give yourself an idea of the equivalence point. So that is uh, pretty good. That is how you find the pH at the equivalence point. Let's take a 30 second review of what we just did. So back to the top. At the equivalence point, the acid's equal to the base. So the amount of acid you started with should be equal to the amount of base that's been dropped <laughs> into the solution. And therefore they cancel each other out so there's no acid or base left. And then you know, well, we don't care about the water because it's so much of it is blah, 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 blah. But you do have this anion that you're adding to, oh my gosh, that anion is actually a base. And bases do what to water? That's right, they steal hydrogen from water. So therefore we have Hyd oh no, hydroxide's left over because the acid, oh look at that, oh but there's none of that because there was none left over and then we said, we said man this is a much more complicated ice table, I better actually plug things in and use KB, where'd the KB come from? We used the KA times the KB equals the KW which is called the water constant, one times ten minus fourth. So this was the KB value, and then we plugged in these values, and oh, that was a pain to solve for in the solver function, but way easier to use the solver function than actually try to foil that thing. Oh my god, that would be a foil my nightmare. So then we solved for x. x represented how much was added on, so then we... <coughs> blah, 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 blah. Then we plugged that value back into our ice table. We found out how much hydroxide. Now that we know how much hydroxide, we could figure out the POH and the pH. Woo! What was that, Mr. Shangra? You're running down the hallway. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we're done. <laughs> That's okay. The videos are very free flowing, lots of jokes and stuff. Started off with an art option.